Hi, it's Mary Wagstaff. I wanted to share with you why your attempts at a new relationship to alcohol haven't worked. What I find is people fall into two categories. One is the do more category. They take action to avoid or even compensate for alcohol or the learning more category, another free class, podcast, sober Instagram account, doing more research without actually applying any of the information in real time. Neither of these methods are efficient, but I have great news. I have the silver bullet and it's called the five shifts. It is a process to find freedom from alcohol and it's available to you right now in a free training. And you'll also uncover the five myths of quitting drinking so you can stop doing that. Register in the show notes or on my website, marywagstaffcoach.com, and I'll see you there. Welcome, welcome. My name is Mary Wagstaff. I am a life coach who ended a 20-year relationship with alcohol without labels, counting days, or ever making excuses. In this podcast, we will explore my revolutionary approach to quitting alcohol that breaks all the rules, amazing stories from women who are throwing a better party because of it, and how you can stop drinking and start living. This show is not a substitute for rehabilitation, medical treatment, or advice, so please talk to a health professional if your alcohol consumption is a risk to your mental or physical health. Now on with the show. Hey, my beautiful listeners. So I was just joking. <laughs> Last week I said I was going to be playing the live coaching session, but I decided to do it this week because the Q&A went a little longer and I don't like to really do episodes over an hour long. So here we are this week with our live coaching session. I'm really excited for you to get a feel for how this work Um, the five essential shifts that we've talked about, the sacred journey of the self, how it's really interwoven into all that you do. And from that framework, you can meet any challenge that you are faced with. So thank you so much for being here. In the link of the show notes, I put my a direct link to the website so you can download the five essential shifts if you haven't already. It's basically um, a podcast length um, workshop that's um, on demand. So it's packed with value and it'll really bring, um, it's just very concise um, as far as the, the steps that we take when we're taking you from living a life where alcohol does it doesn't seem like it's possible to live an alcohol free life and still have an amazing life, um, even though alcohol is causing you a lot of pain and you really want to get it out of your way. Um, so yeah, the workshop is there, and then also in the show notes is a direct link to um, my scheduler for the um, for my complimentary alignment sessions. So. I love to meet my listeners, so that's what's really fun. Um, But also, this is where I get to kind of start to see you from the third party's perspective so we can, well, I'll always be a third party perspective, but so I can pull out some of the values that you are really living into that alcohol is getting in the way of so you can walk away from that session with a thought, an amazing thought that you do believe based on who you are, your values, how you're showing up in the world already, and then take that to start making decisions from that place so that when you're faced with the question of to drink or not to drink, and instead of getting like, ah, screw it, you can tune into this thought that will create for you of not today, not today, girl, because I've got your back. And so you start living into that highest version of yourself through some of the urges, through, you know, those sneaky, romantic, um, nostalgic thoughts of, but this is so amazing until the next day where I feel like the worst person and I want to crawl under a rock. Um, you know, and we do all of this work from the place of observation, self-observation without judgment, full of compassion. And then when you start to know that your mind works like everyone else's, when you're having these sneaky thoughts or you think, but why not me? Why can't I just have one? That's just the same quality of thought 
um, as, you know, wanting or is what's kind of getting you into thinking that alcohol is amazing too. It's not about just being able to have one. It's understanding that one, even just one, really isn't doing anything. It's really not changing your life. But the mind creates all of this drama um, in a very efficient way to receive that concentrated reward of the pleasure, which I talked about in the last episode. And so it just takes some time to build a new path, just like creating a new path in the woods. It just takes some new time to wear down a new path that becomes an easier transition from you know, the face with the circumstance to the thought that's going to create a feeling of like, oh yeah, like I'm going to feel way better and and this is going to be the better version for myself. So, um, and then, you know, we can kind of laugh a little bit about those sneaky thoughts that like um, make everything feel so nostalgic. It's like, oh man, you know, like the beach and a book and it sounds so great and a margarita, like, but you can't just have the beach and the book, like why not? And it's just because that's how the brain works. And when you know the science behind it and you start to then empower yourself from the inside out, the combination of those two of those things, getting to know your highest self is in there and starting to feel that empowered sense of self and your connection to life on your terms, not what someone else is telling you, but starting to understand who you are, then that with the science of forming a habit and then a habit that has um, a big chemical reward with it, those two things combined, the knowledge of those, then you just place it. You take a little bit of a breath, fresh breath of fresh air. You release the clenching of your jaw. You learn some tools for um, present moment experiences and you just keep practicing them and you just keep showing up for yourself. And now, yes, you may face some hard things. There may be some challenging things that you have been using alcohol to avoid that is going to come into your framework. So this isn't easy breezy and we all have to face those things. We all have to confront the story, right? Of why, you know, what is it about myself that I don't like and that I have to tune into? Um, but with the support of coaching and then the support of these tools and being able to recognize thoughts that just aren't true, um, then we flip the script, we reframe the process and just through practice, just like you've gotten really good at drinking, you can get really good at empowering yourself and thinking really amazing thoughts that support the best highest queen version of who you are. And I'm here to help you do that. So that's a long way around about saying that sign up for an alignment session. I would love to meet you. Have an amazing day and enjoy the show. So we can start if you are in, do you feel like you're in a safe and comfortable place? Yes. As long as that spider over there stays where he is. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> if you don't feel like closing your eyes, you don't have to. And actually, <laughs> let's, let's do this before, um, before you do soften your eyes down. Because I feel like, especially in the quarantine time, it's uh-huh. been a really, even though you've been, you know, leaving your house, it's been a nice thing to like acknowledge the space we're in so we don't end up kind of resenting it and just knowing that it it's also a safe space that's hopefully that's how you feel or at least just uh-huh. acknowledging what that space is and that might even be something that can come up during our call today so take a moment to just drop into your breath but before you close your eyes so just take a couple of breaths with the eyes open and maybe we can take a nice deep cathartic breath together so breathing in and open the mouth, let out a nice sigh. <sighs> yeah, let the shoulders relax, let the sitting bones get heavy. Just take a couple more like that at your own pace. <clears throat> <sighs> and so when we can keep um, the eyes open for a moment, tuning, you know, when we shut the eyes, we like go inward, but can you have the present moment experience with the eyes open so you can even be even more aware of where you're at? So just take a moment to look around your room, look up and down, right to left, and even turn and look behind you. And, you know, it might just be a wall, but just see if you <laughs> notice like any, you know, whatever you just notice in your own mind, like textures, colors, um, just what the space invokes for you. And then we can, you can have the opportunity to create 
a little bit more of a container with the environment itself. We spend so much time in these spaces that we kind of like, not take for granted, but just, you know, it's like, you're not, it's like, it's there supporting you in this really amazing way, but we're not, not interacting with it always in that way. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And then if you want, you can soften the eyes down and just tune into another breath again. Hmm. So I'm just going to ask you and you can just say out loud, um, how are you feeling? What's, how are you feeling in this moment? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? (laughs) Mostly good. (laughs) It's the end of the month. And so money's tight. And so we're doing that like end of the month push, which Mm -hmm. we always do. And it always turns out great. And we've got a good project that we're working on today, Mm -hmm. but it's still like that nervousness of like, I don't have a guarantee, you know? So Mm -hmm. that's what, that's what's coming up for me. When, what does that feel like in your body? If you were to describe it in like a sensation, you can take, you can take some time too, if you want, just to feel into it. I mean, it definitely is in my stomach, like nervous butterflies almost, which I Mm -hmm. guess is good because that feels more like excitement than fear. Mm -hmm. And so does that, what is the thought around that feeling? Like, is it like, I have to look at my bank account or what is, what's a thought around that feeling? Like I have to make a plan. I can't just willy nilly hope, (laughs) hope and wish. (laughs) Uh, What is, what does the plan look like? Uh, Well, we have a new product that we want to push out. And so it's really, I kind of have the plan to make a plan. (laughs) So it like involves some research and then like just putting pen to paper and like creating what the offer is going to look like for the client. So that's the last piece. And then we can like really present it. And does that plan, um, is that the plan that needs to go in place in order for you to feel good about the end of the month? Like, yeah, yeah. We have to have this thing to present so that we can get the clients to buy that thing, you know, and without mm-hmm. that thing, there's nothing to present and nothing to buy. Mm-hmm. How, what are your, what are your thoughts around presenting that? I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a hit and it feels like the culmination of a lot of different things coming together and like, it'll be it's it's a little bit of a new venture for us. Not totally, obviously. It's still video, but it's a different kind of avenue. So I'm excited to see the response for it. I feel really good about like what we're gonna come up with. Do you feel like some of the some of the nervousness is also overlapped with that excitement of the answer? Oh, totally. Yeah. So there's excitement and like I feel good about it, but also I felt good about other things that haven't worked out or haven't panned out as quickly as I needed them to or wanted them to. So there's still the fear that like, it's the end of the month. I only have a limited amount of time to make this happen. But also we just recently had this talk about how that's how we feel at the end of every month. And then we do something amazing and it always works out. And it's been almost a whole year of us doing that. So I know Mm -hmm. we can do it. Mm -hmm. But there's Um, always that fear. I've been noticing a lot of lack feeling like the, the thought, an awareness of I feel lack and I know that feeling it attracts more of it you know so I'm trying to just be aware of it and see where it shows up for me it's definitely money is where it shows up the most mm-hmm. does it always feel like this like that same does is, would you say that the fear feeling like the butterflies are more anxiety or yeah And I think I've started shifting it to like, I think it was you and I that talked about how the feeling of fear and excitement are the same, like in your body biologically. And so every time I feel fear, I'm like, no, you're excited. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm so glad we're talking about this. I think I, cause I hadn't just, I had just mentioned this on the show actually, but um, that I'm so let me, let's go take that a little bit deeper. When you, when you say that to yourself, what happens? Well, it depends on the situation. Sometimes I'm like, no, it's fear. <laughs> like yeah. Spider over there. It's definitely, that's real fear. That's not excitement. The spider's in my room. He left, by the way. We're good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> uh, but, but a lot of the time I'm like, well, that is really the same sensation. And then we've worked on all these thoughts that I can put behind to prove that it's excitement, not just fear. Like I know 
what's best for me. I know what I'm doing. I'm depending on me. Like it's not fear. It's I know what I'm doing and I'm excited to do it. Mm, oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Have you, you have this written down, right? <laughs> so <maybe. laughs> I do. I have these things all over on post-its, like on my, most of them are on my desk because that's where the fear comes up the most is when I'm working. <laughs> yes. So, oh my gosh, this is like, okay. So <laughs> you, so this is so interesting. Like the fear, excitement, mm -hmm. anxiety, like, because it's, so would you say it's because a lot of times it's a, like you're being brave and you're being courageous and you're doing something new? Yeah, I'd say probably half the time. It's like this thing, like we're creating a new thing. I don't know what's going to happen. So I'm excited, but also a little bit scared. And then there's this whole lifetime I have of what I, in my brain says is proof that I'm not going to make it further than this. Like I'm always going to be at this point where I just have to make enough to pay the bills. And how do you get past that? And like my whole brain is wired to like, that's the life that I've lived. So that's the experience I have and that's the proof I have. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this stage of like, yeah, but that's what was, that's not what is. So mm -hmm. that's an interesting place to be. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no, it's great. And it's just like so good that you know that distinction. So what do you, what do you want the result to be at the end of the month? I want it to be surprising how much money I made. <laughs> like not just that I did it and I paid the bills this time, but I did it and I have extra. Do you wait until the end of the month to look at your bank account? Oh no, I have to check it all the time. <laughs> okay. No, that's a good thing. Like, so you're not like, you're not a hundred percent surprised at what, when you go, to yeah. the bills, like what's there. Yeah, totally. I'm aware. Um, Okay. So you want to, so would you say that that feeling of anxiousness or nervousness about like doing the final, it's the end of the month bill pay. Um, would you like for that to be gone? Oh yeah. I don't, I literally don't even know. Like I've never lived that way ever. <laughs> it's always been like, okay, how much money do I have left for the next few days or weeks or whatever? Like it's always always an awareness that I have even though you guys have been proven proving to yourself for the last year that you have uh -huh. paid that you've been good uh -huh. yeah so, we're good but like I'd like to be better <laughs> okay. so you're paying the bills and uh -huh. is it kind of like what's left afterwards that seems more scarce yeah that's it I'm quiet so what, what is that feeling? Like once you pay the bills and then like, I mean, does it vary from month to month? Like that you have more than you thought. And then sometimes it's like, oh shit, we've got, you know, we, have we need another job real quick. Yeah, it definitely varies. <laughs> so you'd like it to be more consistent. Mm -hmm. And more consistently, like we have excess, not just enough. Okay. More consistently like excess. So what is that feeling? Girl, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like something that makes sense logically. Like you can have that. And I feel like I've probably lived it at some point, but there's just no memory of it. I feel like it would involve a lot of relief and mm -hmm. then uh, like excitement and pride that I was able to achieve that thing. Relief, achievement, pride. Um, comfort, maybe? Oh, definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, excitement. <clears throat> so that like, so what, and what would that take? Would it take like to have like enough to pay the bills for the next month? Yeah, that would be, that's a good first step for sure. <laughs> I mean, I can't go all the way to billionaire immediately. Right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> let's start like, with, I have a couple months. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of June, when you, after you pay the bills, uh -huh. you would have enough to get you through next month. Like if you didn't get any work. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Um, would it be, so we talked about abundance a little bit. So what is, mm -hmm. what does abundant feel like to you? What is it? What would that feel like in your body? Do you think? I would definitely be very relaxed. Mm-hmm. 
and calm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I would be able to focus more too. Because mm. it's such like a, a regular all the time thing that I'm putting energy on towards in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. And then earlier you had the thought, I know what's best. Do you remember what exactly what that was? Uh, there's, I know what's best for me and I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what's and best. And I'm excited to do it. <laughs> Um, how about something like, I know what's best, I know what I'm doing, I know how to, I know how to create the money. What's like another thought that could be more specific about generating? Oh, well, one of the ones I use in my affirmation box is I can always find more money. Ooh. Can always find more money. That still sounds like a little bit of an anxious thought. Yeah. How about I know how to create opportunities? Okay. I like That's that. It's closer. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Like, it's just like the, when you actually like put this stuff down on paper. Uh -huh. um, what about like an it is done feeling? Mm -hmm. um, like, okay, so... I mean, this month is almost at the end, but uh -huh. like, um, in like July, like what's a statement for July so that the end of July, um, you have like everything you need for two months. Um, okay, so I have everything I need. And then some, I have more than enough. I have, I have, yeah. I mean, I think that's a good start. Yeah. <laughs> Just rattling things off. No, that's what, that's where I think that that's like, and then we want to find this, the thought that can kind of stick, that sticks. Um, I know, what about something like, I know how to generate, you, okay, if you can always find more money. Um, uh -huh. Um, I know how to generate, um, the, like maybe like the amount of money that feels comforting. We could like add the thought into it. Uh-huh. I like that. I'm writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we can come back to it too, but I, um, I think that that could be something worth like looking at. So the, the how you want to feel about the amount of money in your bank account and like what thoughts can get you there. And if you were more relaxed and calm throughout the month, what do you think your actions would be more like? Uh, relaxed and calm. Well then, yeah, I'm not like jumping back and forth between things, trying to find whatever's going to be fastest, but I'm working on what feels best and mm -hmm. is exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be more consistent? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. There, that's a good word. Consistency. I know how to generate consistent income. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, I think for now that's the one. <laughs> All right. I love that. Consistent income. Yay. Okay. Um, so when you are, and talk to me about this a little bit because you know, I just want to know, um, just so we're like, you know, we're covering all of our bases. If you do have an abundance of money, do you feel like the relaxed can take you less motivated to continue to do the work? Like if you get like, if you're like, oh, we got all this money, but then like, maybe it doesn't. Cause I know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And I know what it's like to like, when you're, there's not consistent income, sometimes a lot of it can generate a feeling of like, we can relax and not too be much. consistent. Do you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It is a little bit of a fear, I guess, that I would do that and kind of bounce back and forth. Um, but I feel like over the last year, I've like learned how to be consistent with other things. Okay. And so like being consistent, like that's the goal and being relaxed about it, it does allow me to have fun with it, which where I get stuck is I procrastinate because I'm afraid 
And so I don't do the thing that I know I need to do, even though like it will turn into consistency. <laughs> Are you afraid of the result of, what are you afraid of? Like letting myself down or it not working or like being a waste of time or it's like way too much work and I don't know how to ask for help or what to ask for help with. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of get stuck. So all of the thoughts that aren't based on firsthand experiences. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so just mm -hmm. close your eyes for a minute and then okay. just say out loud a couple of times. I know how to generate consistent income with like a relaxed breath and body. Okay. I know how to generate consistent income. I know how to generate consistent income. I know how to generate consistent <laughs> income. <laughs> Oh, um, I know. I know how. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how true does that feel? I feel, I mean, I'm in this reflective place of like being almost a year out of, of mortgages. And so it feels like that is true because I have continued to pay my bills, even though it's been like a little bit of a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. It has definitely been consistent. We have paid our bills. So, so that's not like, it's one of those things that feels like it's telling me the future thing that I want while also being true now. And mm -hmm. those usually work the best for me. Yeah. I love that because like, if it's been true with like being able to pay the bills every month, so you know that you have it and you guys you're eating and all of those mm -hmm. things, um, then, then from that relaxed place of like, okay, it's true. I can generate consistent income. I've been doing it. I've proved, so you do have the proof that you can do more than just get by really. Yeah. Um, cause that is consistent income from your generated from your own thoughts, feelings, and actions. Right. Yeah. I mean, when with your partner, of course, but, right. uh, <laughs> yeah. but, um, yeah. So could that, feeling could that truth of knowing and feeling that 100 percent create the relaxed state that could like allow the nervousness a little bit that nervous excitement to then create more abundance what do you think I think so because I feel like it puts me in a more creative place like I know how to do it maybe I don't have the thing in my bank right now but I know how so where is it and then instead of being like oh god where is it I'm like okay where are you <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, let's just, I think, can you work on that then? Oh yeah. This is great. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Is that, um, can you share that thought with your, with your partner? Can that be your new mantra? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm going to write it all over our mirrors. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. Um, well, no. And I mean, that's awesome. Congratulations on generating consistent income for Thanks. a year as an entrepreneur. So yeah. um, <laughs> what is that? Yeah, what does that feel like in a in a celebratory way? That's like it, it is like a sense of pride, I guess, like that it seemed like an impossible feat and like kind of a joke, like, well, okay, we'll give it a shot, but we'll probably get jobs soon. Right. <laughs> and oh like we God. just didn't. Yeah. Yes. And so think about that place of like kind of half assed belief that you started with. Mm -hmm. Now think about the next year of like Mobile More, roof. Mobile. <laughs> yeah. Because you did it. You have the proof. Mm -hmm. um, like, then, like, there, nothing is going to stop you guys. So it's so interesting, too, to think, like, the thoughts, the feelings. You were like, well, I'll feel relief and achievement and pride mm -hmm. and excitement. But, like, you weren't even really – I mean, not to say that you haven't been in that place, but, like, mm -hmm. you already have done that. Uh -huh. I can have that feeling now because I here I am. <laughs> yeah. So do you take time to do you guys take time to reflect on that? Have you guys celebrated at all? We are we're talking about planning something for our like actual one year anniversary because um, it is it's just flown by. I mean, every month has been like just make it happen. We have to pay the bills, and like now we're in a place where we can like okay, well we can do that part now. So like, how do we? this new product is something that will provide that consistent income and give us like consistent clients, even in the time of COVID, which is, mm -hmm. you know, where we were like on our way to the best month ever. And then the restrictions started <laughs> and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, now what? So we just had to get creative, but it's been like an emotional roller coaster. And so now we're at that point where like, you can look back and think about like, how do you make it this fun path instead of just this thing you're trying to keep up with, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Awesome. Yeah. I think that the reflection, like celebrating all of the, all of the steps along the way, like we didn't think we were going to do it like one more month. I mean, that's so worthy of a celebration because in that mm -hmm. moment, it's going to remind your brain. <laughs> yes. Like instead of always going to the path on that pathway of lack, uh -huh. um, of nervousness of, Oh my God, are we actually going to do this? Like if you stop at the end of every month, um, a couple, was it last year? Yeah. Last year we paid our biggest tax bill huh? and we celebrated it because it meant we, that was like the most money that we made. So yeah. instead of it being, you know, it's really is like how to look at it. Um, so yeah, that might be something to look at too, is like, high-fiving we paid our bills this uh -huh. month instead of like yeah we do go. usually like we have like a big well whatever happens we end up like screaming at each other basically and like oh my god we did it and then we do a <laughs> hug and a dance and then we're like all right back to work <laughs> yeah awesome no that's so good and I know um like we've talked so much in the past about just you know coming from not a lot of abundance and like uh -huh. that you know, or at least financial abundance and that kind of caring with you. And something I wanted to ask you because yeah. I've been asking, I like, this is just kind of like a new revelation to me from just some mm. conversations I've had, but, and I've asked myself and some other clients is, can, are you ready to just let that story go? I so am. <laughs> it's so yeah. funny because that's literally what, like I worked with the new moon whatever that was Friday Saturday yeah <laughs> and and that was the thing that I was like I'm ready to let this go like I'm ready yeah. to not be that person anymore because I'm not that person anymore yeah that's so <laughs> awesome I mean yeah. someone a long time ago set once told me that it was about guilt like her dad had said guilt is like a bag of bricks all you have to do is set it down yeah. and <laughs> I just feel like that's just like it's so true with all of those stories, like once you be, especially once you become aware of it, right. Uh -huh. Then like, it doesn't have to be your story anymore. Like it might've been part of your story, but it's not anymore. Like you're killing it. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Um, I want to like, I feel like we should have like a celebratory, like thought, but I think that the, <laughs> I think that the, um, I know how to generate consistent income is a really great place to start. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see how that, I'm just adding that to my regular rituals, you know, saying that and putting it all around the house. I'm excited to see how it kind of permeates. Yeah. So what was your, um, did you have like a statement around letting that go? Did you create a, a new thought around that? I didn't. What I did is I like wrote down the things that like the feelings that I had around it, like the guilt and the shame and the embarrassment and all of that. So I have this new moon ritual and I like write down the things I'm letting go of and then I go outside and burn it and it's nice. gone forever. And then I try to not even think about what those things are because they're gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think, um, the guilt and the shame is just like when that, when you think about, is it, Oh, is it because, tell me a little bit more about that. And you don't, and not that we need to bring it back, but just so sure. you can kind of understand it maybe in a different way. But, um, is it just like how you tell me about it? Where is the guilt? What is the guilt and shame? I think it, it I mean, it's a familiar feeling that I felt through my life. And it was like, I always felt just so embarrassed that I didn't have the same things that other people had, that I didn't have money to spend on stuff, that I didn't have the same experiences. And like, like then as an adult, I felt guilty that like I couldn't get my stuff together and like take care of myself well mm -hmm. enough to get beyond that point or whatever, even though it's like now I'm in such a different place mentally that like it's, it's a process and it takes time and there's so many things to identify and like it, it's very intentional and you can't just like wait for it to happen to you. And mm -hmm. for a long time, I think I was just waiting for things to change. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so there was guilt there that like I'm not doing enough. And that was mm -hmm. a huge thing for me for a long time but I let that one go too. <laughs> yeah. What do you think you wanted, you want to be most different, like from with abundance? Like what would you, what do you think would be more just like feeling more relaxed? Yeah. And just not like, I feel like so much of my brain capacity is focused on that one thing that I'm not mm -hmm. 
really present for so many other things because I'm like, but I need money, but I need money, but I need money. And if I could let go of that, then I'm like, oh, look at this. <laughs> uh-huh. <Here I> am. <laughs> right. Yeah. So much power, like in the present moment. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Do you feel like you've been able to let go of what you have, what you're making it mean about what you're capable of? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, even just having this last year is like, there's a bunch of proof that I'm capable and that I'm capable even when I have like depressive episodes that take me out for a while Mm -hmm. or I'm not able to work for a certain number of days for whatever reason, like even when emotionally I'm a mess, I still make it through and I get that income and I like have fun and I have good relationships and I, you know, there's so much good Mm -hmm. even with the darkness that might be there. So like, it's a, it's a thought that proves that I can do it even if I'm not doing it the same way as other people. And I think that was some of the guilt too. It's like, I can't do it the same way, but like, I don't want to. (laughs) Well, I think you're really ahead of the game because what you're so much of what you're (laughs) describing, I feel like is like just like literally being human, like not to, Mm -hmm. like not to downplay any, no, totally um, any sort of like, you know, emotional like heaviness, because I know that that comes in so many different forms but mm-hmm. your willingness to experience it and like having make kind of at times feel like you have had no choice but to experience it yeah um how do you feel like that makes you more um how 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 is that make you more capable of what of the future well i think that i'm not like pretending a lot like there's a lot of feeling and a lot happening but i'm not like okay well i'm supposed to do this so just don't pay attention to that cuz then it'll fester Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then it gets worse and it turns into something else and I really I've just always been a very deep feeling person and I think that really gives me an edge because I'm not ignoring things like I want to feel them so that I can stop feeling them (laughs) (laughs) yeah no absolutely um I just had a conversation with someone who said something about we were talking about sobriety and she was like it's easy to go find something that can inspire you and distract yourself from how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And and I just like, basically that the root of like, of healing is having to face the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can't just like, you can't just, as much as like affirmations are amazing to remind yourself of that place of your highest self, you can't just affirm yourself yeah. Without, without looking at, without facing the what's right there, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that's true for you? Absolutely it is. And the more that I, like, get inquisitive and, like, really face it, the better, like, now I've cleared that block, and I know it's clear. And when it shows up again, I'm like, oh, you're familiar. I know what you are. And it's not, like, the scary thing that mm-hmm. totally takes me off guard, you know? It's like, oh, you're back. Get mm-hmm. rid of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. just being aware, like we talk about the human mind is so like it's so smart and it's so dumb. <laughs> and like <Right. laughs> knowing that fact, I'm like, you're dumb, stop it. <laughs> well, it's evolved. So I heard someone use the term emotional technologies as far as mm. like what we have for like coaching and mindfulness, even though like some mindfulness practices are like literally ancient, but um, you know, that they're more mainstream now. And so it's kind of like the, you know, and we have so many advanced technologies, but the human brain has not caught up to like the other things that have been advanced. Yeah. It just wants like pleasure, you know, gain pleasure, avoid pain and um, to be efficient and it will yeah. to its detriment. Right. Totally. Yeah. Good boy, yeah. Stupid stupid brain (laughs) what are some things that you what are some thoughts that you that you're using currently or maybe if there isn't if there's something else that you you're exploring like when you do have some like like downtime some dark times how's that been going for you well I've been more accepting of it like just okay you're here like make sure there's no fire anywhere you know like are we gonna get evicted probably not so then just rest it sounds like your body and brain needs rest so just do it and like it's okay to be sad and it's okay to like have some off like just giving myself the permission to like I feel sometimes sometimes things don't go well sometimes I just need a break and sometimes I think acknowledging that I need more 
than the people around me maybe like I been in a place of comparison for so long that I'm like well they're working really hard and I can't and then I push myself and then it's like longer recovery time Mm -hmm. and so just giving myself the permission that I'm I have different needs Mm -hmm. and and whatever anybody else is doing doesn't matter because it's not me and not my life and not my things so Mm -hmm. like that that permission has just helped me so much like it's okay and just give it time even if it takes longer than you think it's probably still gonna be fine (laughs) yeah well that sounds like a self-love that sounds amazing Uh Mm -hmm. and do you think that that compare just to kind of take the permission a little bit further do you think that the comparison is actually even like valid i mean you know, no, as far I mean, as from yeah. an experience, or is it, I mean, just kind of a perceive, a perception? Yeah, it's always a perception. And it's definitely like, like deleting Facebook helped stop that. Like, just stop looking over there. Like, stop looking at it. <laughs> Be here. You're here. You're not there. Why are you looking? <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's amazing that the, those apps are like seriously designed for just instant addiction and instant uh-huh. Uh, self-doubt so what about the thought of just like if you're in this space of just saying you know asking yourself is that is that even true oh yeah that's that's one of those ones you gave me that I'm like wait a minute (laughs) just ask that question because usually you're like no it has nothing to do with me oh okay (laughs) and I like it well, and it's just like, we don't, like, you just don't know, right? Yeah, yeah, that carefully curated picture says nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, and um, yeah, the stories that you can allow yourself to create is like proof. So you're like, uh-huh. you can be like, no, see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, not actually true. But that's um, not, I don't have any of that. <laughs> right. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about, um, well, I know you had you had sent me your life intention, which I didn't really look at because I just saw it. But, yeah, um, I sent it like ten minutes, twenty minutes before we were supposed have, to talk. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> do you have um a do you have something that tethers you to because we do live in this human brain that's like you know like where we can be in like this great despair, and then sometimes we're in this like joyful abundance where we're, we feel super connected to spirit or the divine or whatever like whatever that is um you know you just feel really in alignment and really connected and i know that you are a spiritual warrior warrior as mm-hmm. um but do you feel like do you feel like you hold on to that peace when you're in those moments or is there something that like tethers you to knowing that like you you can come back yeah I think I think the experience of my life of like I can come back all the time like it's the spiritual aspect is even in the darkest times I usually still like do my nighttime rituals and have like mm-hmm. this sacred morning ritual like I still have those rituals yeah. sometimes I do I do like fall away from them for like a week or so And it's just the experience of over the last 10 years. That's okay. Because 10 years I've been doing this or however long, you know, Mm -hmm. and like 0.5% there's times where I just can't. And that's okay because majority of the time I'm still doing it. I'm still connected. And there's that thought of like, you're never not connected. Like even the darkness is connection. Yes. Oh, beautiful. I love that. You should write. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's so good. Because I think so. I think that, um, I think that's a really important thing because sometimes the thoughts can get really dark and it's like, how do I even grasp onto that tether of meaning, you know, Mm -hmm. that unflinching place. So awesome. Yeah. Even the darkness is connection. That's such a good thought to have. Um, Because, you know, you're like, you're never alone and the, and the human mind is wild. And especially I think when you're working really hard and striving to push your own limits and your boundaries and getting excited about, you know, things you haven't done before. Um, It, you know, like the brain can get overloaded kind of. Yeah, totally. Do stupid brain. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing because it does so many awesome things for you too. So um, what is, okay. I'm like just looking at this really right now. um, Let's see. You want to read your life intention to me? Oh, sure. Let's see. I think I worded it slightly different. Let me see. I have it. 
I radiate, I radiate so bright, I illuminate those around me. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. <laughs> what is that? What do you think a value is that you hold that's that is in line with that? Like a life value? Um, I haven't really like thought about it and I don't know how to put it into words, but I know that like fun and love are like the things that everything to me in this world relates to. Like everything I'm doing is out of love and to have fun because we're here to experience this world in a joyful way, not in like a sorrowful way, even mm -hmm. though there is that too, you know? So yeah. for me, it's like love and fun are the things that matter most. And so that's where that, like, that's how I will shine bright is by mm -hmm. being in love and having fun. <laughs> mm, I love that so much. Um, I want can I do something? Can we do an exercise really quick? Yeah. So um, this is this exercise from the Heart Math Institute, which I'll send okay. you the link. It's really interesting. It's called Shift and Shine. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing it with Emmett, but it's just like, it just always, it can, it's just like a really quick way to bring you back into, into the space. But I love mm -hmm. like shift and shine because it can be like a little mantra too. Uh -huh. just like feeling like, you know, like you think it's not too crazy, like dark, but it's like, no, I just want to bring back that joyful love, you know? Uh -huh. Okay. So just soften your eyes down if the spider's not there. <laughs> No, he's gone still. I'm good. <laughs> and then bring your awareness into your physical heart space. And actually, just bring your hand onto your heart, the space in between or in the middle of the chest. You know where your heart is. <laughs> and just breathe right in that space. Imagine you're, you could breathe in and out of that area. And so it, Imagine the heart moving from the front to the back body to your back and then from the left to the right. So you have this three dimensional experience. And then bring into your awareness something that brings you great joy, like something that when you see or you think about just like automatically makes you feel like awesome. So just think about that for a minute and then See if you can start to radiate that feeling inside of your heart. And just as you breathe, allow that feeling of joy to grow and start to expand just like a giant sun in the center of your heart. And it starts to move out through the sides into the front into the back just like the rays of sun and just like you were saying in your life intention illuminating so brightly radiating so brightly that it illuminates those around you because they can't help but just be brightened by that same light and just imagine this beautiful ray these beautiful rays extending from the center of your heart all around you, just meeting every single person, every plant, every animal, everything that you come into contact with. And as that light, like that beam of light hits that thing, it just automatically lights up and becomes even more illuminated and more radiant itself. And you can also let that feeling of joy move through your body, healing any wounding, any darkness, any discomfort, any pain, any physical pain, any emotional pain. Just let it totally fill the body, going to the places where it's needed most. Hmm. And just taking a nice big breath in through the nose. Coming back to your body. You can release your hand if it's not already. Uh, how did that feel? Well, that was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I cried a tiny bit. <laughs> did you? I could yeah, like this is so pretty. <laughs> I could see you shy. I was like closing my eyes too, and I was like seeing like all your little rays touching everyone. <laughs> I love I that. 
exercise. I've done so many exercises like that, but in that way, I think for you, especially because you do have so much joy in your heart that like, mm-hmm. if you can just spend that moment, like my heart already like feels warmer. I mean, probably cause my hand mm-hmm. was too, but yeah, was <laughs> um, do you think that's something you could use? Oh yeah, I'm doing that every day. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Or just like, you know, if you're in traffic or like what whatever, mm-hmm. like it's like so Emmy and I, we have we've been working on it, but we just are like that's kind of our mantra. Like if we, we spend a lot of time together now, so we're like shift and shine. <laughs> <laughs> just like it. all it shift out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. You just bring your instead of being in your head, it's like if you automatically bring your awareness alone just to your heart. Mm-hmm. Um and like just think about that thing that brings like that warmth. Mm-hmm. It's just so easy and so good. Yeah, that feels amazing. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank um, you. Yeah, you're welcome. And so just because we are here and we're talking about um, the other thing that you had said was showing up for you as sugar. And uh-huh. um, talk to me a little bit about, about that. I think it's uh, like... I mean, I know it's tied to my childhood, like sugar was very much like a comfort thing, like, like, we need to feel better. So let's go get ice cream and cake. And like, so now it's my go to when I'm anxious, just I need some sugar. And so I've been just basically like with alcohol, like just paying attention to it. I'm not having any guilt or shame, like have some and then notice, like, I know what it does to me, it gives me headaches, it makes me more anxious and more depressed but like, I still want it. And what is it about it? It's like the texture and the flavor and it ties to these memories from my childhood. And like, it's just, just whole complex web of feeling. <laughs> and even just in our session today, I'm like, oh, it's not really a problem. It's not really like I've been allowing it to be, mm-hmm. but I know, I know what I need to do. I know what's best for me and it's not sugar. <laughs> yeah. So do you, is that some, do you think you, it's something you had been doing more of since you haven't? had alcohol in your way oh big time yeah I pick up sugar without alcohol for sure (laughs) it's like a different way to like have a vice or something (laughs) okay um so what are the first ways that we you know start talking about alcohol you Mm -hmm. know getting out of your way is just to like also give yourself permission to like Mm -hmm. not make it be that thing that you're telling yourself no to because usually Mm -hmm. the brain (laughs) Right. And then sometimes when you have it, if you're in that place of full awareness, it's like not can potentially be not as enjoyable, but yeah, it's something that you have to look at. Have you tried doing any like um, fast tape fast forwarding, like 24 hour fast forwarding of like kind of living, living into the feeling I haven't really. <laughs> I know okay. that's a powerful tool and I haven't done it. I like, I, I see myself purposefully ignoring like, nope, I'm just going to eat it. I don't care. <laughs> okay. So you said you feel anxious or sometimes it's like, if you want comfort, uh, huh. it's very much a comfort thing. And it's like for my entire life, like me and mom share a chocolate bond and that's what we do when we're together is we enjoy delicious chocolate. Huh. <laughs> like it's just this, huge thing of comfort for some reason Mm -hmm. and I mean I guess it's it's like chemically it gives you a shot of dopamine or something yeah so it's not like imagined (laughs) no I mean it's definitely addictive for sure yeah um so what and then what are the results let's talk about some of the results that you get from it from sugar well there is like immediate satisfaction it's always delicious because I always get good stuff I'm not like <laughs> uh-huh. eating garbage chocolate if I'm gonna eat chocolate it's gonna be good <laughs> yeah absolutely so it's like immediate satisfaction and then and then after the first couple of bites it's like I'm gonna regret this later and that's what I think about instead of like enjoying that mm-hmm. and I've shifted that before in the past like I've taken I've broken it before and I'm just coming back to it. And I think that's why it's frustrating for me. It's like, I've, I've already kicked this, but I haven't. And we Mm -hmm. even just talked about that, about how like it's showing up again. So there's like a new layer to uncover. Mm -hmm. Um, But then, yeah, there's like headaches that if I eat too much of it, there's headaches and then I feel guilty and shameful and like Mm -hmm. a little bit embarrassed. I don't want anybody to know, but I will be honest about it because also it's a little bit funny to me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, so when you, do you think you use it as a reward as well? Oh, totally. Yeah. Okay. And, like, and, and uh -huh, like, oh, we had like a good day or like we're celebrating something or like whatever, like, yep. Turning to ice cream for sure. Or cake, probably both. <laughs> Does it always make you feel physically bad, like even without the guilt and shame? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, because what I do is I, I don't just like have a normal like serving. I get like a giant thing of ice cream and a huge piece of cake and then I eat them over the next like two or three days. It's like way too much for one person to be eating. <laughs> do you think that you, when like when you have cut yourself off from it before, has it been just like all or nothing? Not totally. I always try to have like apples and honey and like some kind of natural sweetness so mm -hmm. that it's not this like sugar laden thing, you know, because I do, I, I need that sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will still allow myself like if we're somewhere and they have like really good truffles, I'll have one. Like I have the ability to just moderate, <laughs> I guess is the right way. It just really reminds me of drinking, honestly, because like I just go so hard with it. Like I'm just going to eat all of it for days and days and then I'll take a break and like recover from that. <laughs> okay. Really so then weird. what was it when you thought, when you were just like, okay, enough's enough with your drinking. Mm -hmm. uh, what was, what was the thought for you? Well, that for, for drinking, it was like, this is clearly a danger to my life. Like it was clearly causing issues in my day-to-day -day life. And I feel like, I feel like it's not that urgent with sugar is the way that it feels like it's not that big of a deal, even though there's all the science, like I know all the things that it does to me. I know what it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just yeah. like, nah, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a sneaky one. Uh -huh. um, okay. Let's see if we can. Okay. What do you say? So why do you think it's creeped up more recently? Do you think like quarantine and like, yeah, I guess that is it because it's been like, like, well, I need something to get me through. Like I don't have enough, <laughs> like I have a freaking puppy and all the stuff I want in the world. <laughs> like what else can I do? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So you're using, I mean, so it's obviously you're aware of this like emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's see what, and how do you, like, how do you want the sugar to make you feel? Like, what do you think the result is going to be when you, like, what's your Just brain that, telling you? It's that it's satisfaction like, of the, like, flavor and the texture. Like, that's what I'm after. Mm -hmm. And you only get it, I only get it for the first couple of bites of whatever it is. Like I'll have it for that. And then it's just the same thing. And now I've had too much of it because you can't just buy a little bit. I mean, obviously you can, <laughs> but like, that's the way my, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going for is that like, it really is that satisfaction of the first couple of bites. And then after that, it's just like, now I have this. <laughs> Do you, okay. So solving for the action like i was gonna mm -hmm. say like, i mean there's a couple things like there is uh -huh. the actual action of like not having it around but uh -huh. that's not gonna obviously change your thought about uh -huh. it so can you start the process of just slowing down yeah that's a good one for sure because i do just like wolf my way through it <laughs> So what's a way that you can, um, like, are you usually with Joey when you're in, in, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. um, and you can, do you feel like you have the ability to kind of pull back and be present of your experience, even if you're with someone else? Oh, totally. Okay. So what do you, what would you think is a good way to start, um, just to start? Like, do you think like, if you get something just like, I'm just going to eat half of this and I'm going to get rid of the rest no matter what. Yeah. I think that is, that's basically where I'm <laughs> like, I just have to commit to like, I know what it does to me. Maybe I should look up some terrifying stuff about it so <laughs> that I have that same fear that alcohol gave me. <laughs> well, right. But even within the month, like we know, like we were just saying the brain, yeah. like still do whatever. So even though there are negative consequences and like sometimes that's good to, it is good to remember, like, 
okay, this could create inflammation, uh-huh. you know, more pain or whatever. Do you notice uh-huh. that in your body? Totally, yeah. Yeah. I feel puffy. It's it's really similar to alcohol for me. Like yeah. I get really moody and I feel puffy and like hot. <laughs> sugar? I know. Sugar is like especially if I eat it before bed the next day. Oh I, man, yeah. I feel like I ha- had a hangover. Yeah, isn't it crazy? <laughs> yeah, I think especially when you're not drinking too and you're so uh-huh. aware of the difference of being sober, like everything kind of seem does that is that been your experience that yeah my the sensation of everything is just greater without alcohol and like the dampening of it over your life in general like Mm -hmm. I just really I think that's what I know that's what made me so aware of what sugar does to me because I cut it after my first month of being alcohol free because I realized how much sugar I was now having Uh and then and then like once I noticed it I was like like I had that thought before I cut it out and then I was like okay well let's pay attention I'm gonna eat some ice cream tonight let's see and then like Mm -hmm. yeah it's totally like a hangover like an actual I'm like cranky (laughs) and I didn't sleep well (laughs) just crazy so let's think about a future focused version that you of a thought that you had around alcohol um I'm I'm trying to remember some like the Mm -hmm. it's like this isn't like it's not the best version of you and that the yeah. first, I remember something like the first future version of you will thank you for this. Mm-hmm. She will. <laughs> yeah. She so, sure will. Yeah. And what about something about reward? Because if it was used as, if it's been used as reward or like a quote unquote treat, mm-hmm. how about pausing to just feel the sensation of achievement in your body? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be good. Because then I can really tap into that feeling easier. Like, well, I'm yeah. actually aware of it. And I think that that's something that our, you know, we've been really conditioned to is that, like, at the end of the day, I even had like this, like, journal. It was like a, what was it? It was like a manifestation journal, but like that talked about reward and at the end of it, of like a physical reward. And I'm like, really as an adult (laughs) the reward should be the achievement of the thing Uh uh-huh like that's the thing you were trying to do you did it (laughs) and then as an adult like I just get myself whatever I want once I like achieve the thing you know what I mean Uh Mm -hmm. not to say it's not exciting like okay we can now pay for a vacation but like we did the thing to get there that is the satisfaction with or without the the vacation or whether about the chocolate or whatever right 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 do you believe that yeah totally and that's something that I mean even we were talking about it with like our business celebration like really yeah. really being in the moment and and appreciating that thing and like mm-hmm. I think I just want to make that more of a regular practice like even walking the dogs is an achievement I celebrate every day I'm like thank god that's over <laughs> like <I did. laughs> Awesome. Um, so what's a thought you can have when you're imbibing or when you're getting ready to? <laughs> well, I think something that can at least help me like start weaning myself off is like, I definitely do have more fun when I have less sugar, <laughs> awesome. just in general. And since fun is what my life purpose is, okay. yeah. <laughs> that's the thing I can focus on. How do you and so yeah, how do you feel when like in your body when you have less sugar? Uh I have more energy and energy is like my number one complaint in life is that I don't have enough. So when I have less sugar, I have more energy and and I've got clearer focus and just more I think it's easier to tap into joy because I don't have that guilt and shame about eating it and then also like the physical heaviness of having it in my body. Mhm. Those are all really, <laughs> See, I don't think you really need to like look up any facts because you have all of them. I do. Yeah. That's right? true. <laughs> uh, do you have any bo- other goals? Um, I know in the past we've talked about like physical health, like your pa- like some chronic pain that you've had. Mm-hmm. Is that, do you have any kind of like results around that that could help you with the thoughts thoughts, feelings, actions to achieve that result that you are working towards? Um, well, I mean, like it's all, it's all intertwined, I feel like. So I have like these rituals that I'm trying to just get in place. And so I do have like a movement thing that I've been adding mm-hmm. over the last few weeks and like just 
giving myself permission that it, it can take time and that it's not going to be like this perfect boom I nailed it on day one and now that's over and I never have to think about it again like mm -hmm. it, it's a process and there there will be some things that come back and reflect at me and like it's just it's okay that it takes some time and that I, I don't have all the answers all the time but I do know what's best for me <laughs> and yeah, it's not sugar. <laughs> oh, you know what's best for you yeah so I think um the I think that the more energy um more energy and clear folk like all of the things that really are your the results that you've been aiming for over the last year that you've been working mm -hmm. and doing so awesome mm -hmm. at um i just think it's another layer of that that you yeah remind yourself of to get to um to being in that place where you're you know m moving you're able to also have i mean it kind of goes back to what we talked about at the beginning which was that you know being more relaxed too mm -hmm. just like more comfortable in your body because you're not drained or having like a sugar crash or whatever yeah and even though that is from an action if you're in that place where you're tapping into that feeling and even the thought like i know how to generate consistent income from the beginning like that could also have a ripple effect to what you're choosing to do if oh, you're totally if your energy is just like a little bit more consistent yeah totally consistent energy yeah, yeah. oh my gosh i love that consistent <laughs> income and consistent energy yeah it's like the same thing because income is money or energy is right. and money right 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 love it Gosh, it's so good Yay. <laughs> how do you feel awesome super psyched awesome. <laughs> like i was already gonna have a good day but now, <laughs> now oh my gosh so watch out <laughs> yeah, watch out so i mean do you have a goal you're working on right now like a um goal? The, i mean just getting this this product out really awesome. yeah and that's that's the thing that's yeah, the thing are you working on that today yeah that's we're, we're getting off the call i'm gonna walk the dogs so that thing's over and then we'll celebrate walking the dogs and then <laughs> we're doing it <laughs> awesome well good i'm glad you have some good um some good energy to yeah. move forward with yeah thank you oh so my much. gosh thank you so much for like I'm talking to me and coaching. With yeah, me. <laughs> of course. Love it. Yeah. And any, any time you need extra support, I am here for you. If you, like, I just know sometimes it's just like a thought or you're in a place where you are like, I can't get through the, you know, whatever it mm -hmm. is, and you're just stuck. Mm -hmm. um, just call me. Like, I'm happy to like do this with you at any time. Mm, well, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh. Like I wish, like, <laughs> like I, you know, sometimes you're, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm in this state. I'm in this feeling. I know that mm -hmm. this is like the way, but like, I just need someone to like, show me my mind right now because I'm, yeah. I'm not seeing it. So yeah, totally. Um, and you're like, so you've been doing the, you've been doing the hard work for so long that like, <laughs> you're just easy. You're a great, you're like really good to coach because you're co you're just coachable, like, which is yeah. a good thing. I'm probably not as coachable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm so excited for you. And, um, I just want to like, I don't, I'm doing, I'm going to be doing a little bit more work this week because I need to figure out a schedule. I need to see some people. I'm like not <laughs> going a little crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's been a little too much. And like yeah. I am glad I stayed home. I ended up doing that cacao ceremony with freedom, which was really oh, yeah. awesome. If you ever um she they were doing it like on a sliding scale donation, but the chick she did it with was really great. And it was it was really it was really good. It was what I needed because like, you know, sisters of the moon i have like i just feel like i kind of want to be part of like another group <laughs> that like i'm not feel, like you know facilitating not that yeah. i do feel like it's for everyone but like i do feel like a little lack just because i've been in quarantine for so long just like yeah just like some friend time connection yeah so, some actual in-person connection it's just so yeah. much different you can't get it over the internet man you can do pretty good but it's just not the same yeah and like it was nice because this well the one thing about this though was like it was live 
and it was a small group. So it was just like, mm. and we did the cacao, like it, that was pretty awesome. But yeah, if you're ever like doing anything just that sounds like a supportive <laughs> friend experience, just let me know. <laughs> Absolutely. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Well, stay in touch and reach out anytime you need anything. I'm always, I'm always here for you. Will do. Thank you, Mary. All right, girl. Have a great day. And I'm yeah, happy. me too. I will be keeping good thoughts. I will shift and shine and think all those good thoughts for your new client. Thanks. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Bye. Bye. The process of unraveling your story outside of the confines of alcohol is truly a sacred and beautiful journey of the self. Rediscover who you are and a whole new world again. Stop by my website, marywagstaffcoach.com to get instant access to the on-demand workshop of my revolutionary five shifts approach. And while you're there, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we will create together your life intention. This is the framework for which all of your decisions around alcohol are made from your truest and highest self. In addition to working remotely worldwide, I host private one-on-one -on -one healing retreats at my sanctuary in Mount Hood, Oregon. I can't wait to connect.